All right, guys, I decided to speak to you. Um, <clears throat> I know you guys have never heard my voice. You've just seen my videos where I am putting up a series of pictures, adding music. Uh, I do music um, videos with the lyrics on there and uh, basically sharing symbolic information, but nothing's explained. I guess uh, God and myself decided that uh, now's the time to speak to you. You can hear my voice. Eventually I'll show my face. Uh, I'm not too deformed. No, I'm not, I'm not deformed at all. I'm, uh, I'm a normal looking person. I just uh, I don't like to reveal too much. Um, but eventually, as I trust more of you, and um, I do trust you guys, I will reveal more, and this is one layer of revealing, um, my voice, which I have a voice for silent movies, I know that, but uh, hopefully you guys can deal with it. <coughs> All right. Sorry, there's lots of smoke in California, so, uh, and allergies, and, you know, six seasons, so I'll be maybe coughing a little bit, hopefully not too much. So, All right, so I wanted to start off by telling you guys a little bit about uh, some of the videos that I've been making where I'm showing um, a snake and an eagle or dragons or whatever you want to interpret them as uh, embedded in the geology. I don't believe that these are old giant uh, dragons or snakes or eagles. I believe that things in this world are energetically represented and have a physical location of things by that energy depending on uh, what that energy is. That can be thought of in many ways, but I don't believe that there was actually these really large dragons that um, fossilized and, those, and we're living on top of them. But if you guys believe that, that's fine, but that's not what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say is there is individuals that are elite as far as their information, uh, understanding, uh, the information they received, that know certain things about this world, uh, and have for a long time, maybe passed down in their families. A lot of evidence of that, but <clears throat> I believe that they see this as an energetic talisman. All places on earth are energetic signatures, symbolic talisman type things, and they all play a different part. I'm going to point out what it is for the place where I'm from. So I am from San Jose. San Jose, California. The Bay Area. South Bay. Um, I, I want to point out a connection to the Egyptians. I want to point out uh, connection to the Garden of Eden, possibly. I want to co point out a connection to uh, Hermes, Thoth, uh, communication, translation, um, higher technology. Uh, also want to point out a connection to the Matrix the grail and other words associated with that and um, 
what it all may mean, at least in the energetic uh, form that it takes place here in the Bay Area, here in California. All right, so I'm going to start off just by pointing out uh, features, symbology, uh, way things are named, um, you know, um, uh, l uh, land, uh, certain specific land uses and um, natural features of the land. So let's see. I, I will start off first off. Let me just in case some of you watching this haven't seen what I'm trying to point out uh, with pictures in previous videos is that to me this shape here that I'm tracing to me looks like the head of a snake, a dragon, kind of turtleish, reptilian like head. Mostly looks like a snake to me. So there's a geological energetic feature that visibly looks like a large snake. <clears throat> Could be a snake headed type of dragon of sorts. Um, I want to point out multiple uh, features that are bowl-like, uh, egg-like, circular, uh, fertile energetics that are coming out of California and then down to a more microcosm, the Bay Area. It's like a fractal of it moving west. Um, so this area would be like where its eye would be. It's indented, and then hills surround it. They're all higher around this area, except in here. There could be that's like where uh, the snake would have like a nostril or something. It goes a little bit lower right here too, and enters in to the area that would be kind of a smaller valley in here where the eyeball would be. And these are all hills. They're just uh, a little bit lower. They use a lot of fans through here. They get uh, fan energy, wind energy through there. Lots of high winds. Um, these are all higher mountains through here. Uh, let's move on to backing up a little bit. Uh, what we'll see is, is this is more like an eagle face or a bird-faced dragon. It's even got a little, I don't know what you, what you call this on a, on a bird or a chicken. It's like the, not the cockle or whatever. I don't know. But it like feathers that you see on some stylizations of a dragon or, or a phoenix kind of coming off right there. Nostril, beak shape that bends, gets a little bit sharper right here, comes over. Eyeball, this would be inset. This is this is Clear Lake. This is, this is a large lake right here. This is the northern bay, Santa Rosa, heading up to northern, more northern California. Even though the Bay Area is all northern California, it's uh, the lower northern California. This would be the North Bay. San Jose and Silicon Valley. It's not silicone. People say silicone. It's silicon. Silicon is made from silicon. The wafers that they put in the technology into the computers and all that, it's silicon crystal. It's, you can make silicone from silicon. Uh, one of the raps my buddy used to say was, we live in Silicon Valley with Silicone Sally. So a woman gets silicone breasts, but, uh, um, you know, I guess some man, men nowadays are trying to be women, but um, silicone 
is the, what goes in those fake breasts. Silicon is what's in the technology. <coughs> Similar, not the same though. Um, either way, this has the shape of like a beak and its tongue, like it's o almost like it's opened, uh, screaming a little bit, going for a bite. Um, some pictures are different than others, but there's like a, a, a shape of a, the bottom part of the beak here. But like I said, I don't think it's an actual old dinosaur, dragon, bird thing. I think it's just energetically coming out of the geology because it represents something energetically from God, nature. Um, so <clears throat> this is like an, an Ouroboros in essence, or also the Ouroboros, the Caduceus, all these things are just symbolically showing something very similar. Even the, the Mexican flag is all connected to this Quetzalcoatl. Uh, I can go on and on. I've showed the images and stuff like that. I can go into more detail in other videos. Uh, let's let's look at the the Mexican flag first. There's a snake imagery with the Americas. Period. United States, all originally snake, dragon. Uh, Amaru dragon is some believe where we get the word for America. Not. America Vespucci. I don't really think it was a real person. Um, anyways, this image right here, guys, the Mexican flag, it is an eagle eating a snake. This is a representation of the Ouroboros. This eagle, snake, uh, cyclic thing. You know, we essentially, our energy start off as a snake. We're on our belly. We can get stepped on, uh, get all kinds of things. We have to defend ourselves from the floor. Then eventually we can evolve into this eagle raptor type thing, which is just another reptile with feathers and now can fly. And it's more heavenly, uh, more divine, considered more divine. Let's see. All right, so the Ouroboros bites its own tail. That's one represent. It just representing something. Sometimes it's an infinity, right? It's usually in a circle. Um, uh, there's a, a representation of it like this, where it's like a snake, and then it has wings, and it's eating itself, right? It, it, it it's a, the cycle of transmutation of becoming more superior blah 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 right here again dragon snake right snake dragon um you know eating its own tail dragon snake blah 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 let's see i think you guys get the point you'll notice there's versions like this this is kind of the never-ending story um uh, symbol on the front of the book. It's connected to a lot of things. They constantly, the ones that know about the esoteric nature of the world and and uh, symbolic nature of everything, will, uh, you know, point it out, put it in books, movies, music, everything. Here it is again. So, going back to the California, which is a very important place. I think you all got to recognize that the, the Central Valley, the large valley, is like the egg, the womb, the matrix, and I'll get into the matrix, the grail, the bowl, the cup, the chalice. Um, it's like protecting it in a way. You can look at it that way. It's like the two sphinx, um, the two griffins, in essence, symbolically. I know it's not one of them looks more griffin-like or whatever. 
Uh, also, it's the eagle snake eating itself. Kind of the same thing, one's a lower form. Of course, this one's lower form is actually south, which is kind of considered low, lower, or whatever. We face things going, you know, north is upward on our screen, but, you know, it just depends on which way you want to face. But anyways, the southern thing is the snake. The northern thing that has the higher ground is an eagle-looking thing. And it goes around the circle and attaches itself to itself. It just has two heads, no tail. I'm arguing symbolically it is an Ouroboros energetics showing itself. And that this is a womb. And then you get into the fractal of it, you have another womb. This one's actually still filled with water. It used to be filled all the way. You can see the water goes in to the, to the, to the Great Valley, the Big Valley. But at one time it was filled completely. I'm pretty sure. I don't want to say, yeah, it had to be, you know, no matter what, I know for sure. I can't show that to you, so imagine it was. Um, so this is the chalice. This is a chalice. It's a grail. Um, I'll, I'll go through the etymology of, of where, how I'm connecting this. So what is a grail? So grail, holy grail, um, it's a large shallow dish basin. Or gradiel. This is where like gradient, like a gradient is a slope, right? There's a slope involved. This, this is where all these words come from, a flat dish or a shallow vessel. Um, uh, Latin crater or bowl, so a crater, a scoop, a valley. Uh, um, French grail, it's a cup. Um, they, they made these words, bowl and cup and all this stuff. It all stems from this original understanding that it's like a womb, a vessel, where things can um, be mixed and created. As far as valleys, they are <clears throat> the vessels that hold all the micronutrients that come from the mountains. The mountains are from plates and... and geological movement and energies uh, creating uplift and taking things from underneath and bringing them to the surface. And then it acts like a watershed as the rains come and then it pulls and strips all those nutrients and everything down into the valley. And so you have everything that you need, all the mixture, the layering of crystals, micronutrients, macronutrients, everything. It's all there, and it becomes very fertile because that's what all life needs is all those elements, right? So, um, uh, other words for it is cratalis, uh, crater, kratis, um, crater, uh, and then that, that was a large wine mixing vessel it was a crater. <coughs> Uh, I'll point out that Napa Valley is right here, and that's the upper northern bay. So this is like a large mixing bowl. So there's your wine, and you can come mix it. I know it's not; it doesn't mean a whole lot, but anyways, um, let's go to the word matrix. All right. So matrix in the Bible, it means womb. It's uh an opening. Um, so this is a, 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 a womb area, a, a, a chalice, a cup, a bowl. We, we know how that's all connected. I don't think I have to go that deep into it. I want to point out that in a cellular, in, a, in a biology, the cell's matrix is this cup. It's this womb. It's this, it's right here. It's this area that everything is mixed in, that everything sits in. 
is the matrix. Our universe is the matrix. So when you guys see these words, um, they were ways of describing something that was similar in feature and energetics and uh, placement and and uh, what it does. All right. So you can take it seriously, or you can you know say, oh, it's just here or there or whatever. But it's any time it shows up, really. And then what is connected with it? So it's the matrix for what, all right? So yes, we're living in lots of different layers and types of matrices, right? Matrix. This is just one. I'm just pointing out this is a type of matrix. It's a technological matrix, is what I'm trying to say. And it's a it's an informational matrix, and it's a a matrix of translation and communication and mind. Uh, and it's a matrix of humans. We have, we have that we're one of the largest mixing pots in the world. So many things: energetically, financially, uh, spiritually, environmentally. Um, we got everything. It's all here. It's it's all balanced here. We got good and evil, and I'll show you more about that. So. Um, in biology, matrix is the material or tissue in an animal or plant cell in which more specialized structures are embedded into it. And a specific part of the mitochondria that is the site of oxidation of organic molecules. So this is the site where oxygen is pulled in and life is. So to have life, you have to have a matrix of some sort. There has to be a Petri dish. There has to be that sort of thing. So energetically, symbolically, geographically, or ge geologically, it's showing up here. And it's showing the symbology and the energy of very specific characteristics gods, or a god specifically, and a feminine god, and its father, and uh, their connection to reptiles or snakes, and it's connecting to symbology of Eden and the apple of knowledge and uh, good and evil. So, let me get into that. All right. So, one part of the duality of good and evil is uh, represented in the name of the mountain ranges. So, this mountain range that runs this way, the top part of the jaw of the snake, or whatever you want to call it, the east mountain range of the Bay Area of Silicon Valley, of the South Bay, or actually all the way up uh, to the Mid Bay, almost North Bay. There's a divide, and it's not called Diablo on the north side, but on the snake's head part. <clears throat> this is the Diablo mountain range. So, Diablo. Let's go into that for a second. The Diablo. Okay. The Diablo is the devil, right? But it is also diable. So there's a lot of connections with this word diable. I'll point out a few of them. So diable, diable, devil, okay, in French, diabolus. So to be able is to go a certain direction. You're able to go. You're able to go through something. You're able to do something, right? You're enabled. It's a direction. It's a path, right? So, die is two. So, I argue that this word, die, able, means two different directions, a crossing point, right? It's die, abled. It's able to do two different things. So, you're 
Die Able or Diablo mountain range is the Devil's Cross. This area here is the Devil's Cross, is what I'm arguing. And also, the word die able has die, and it's di, but you know, it, it has a relationship to, to dying, death, right? No more. That side of the duality, that one, which is the ender, right? And the second part is able. Right? Who was Abel in the Bible? Abel was Cain's brother. Cain killed Abel. He had to make Abel die. Because Abel was a, a, the brother of death. He was killing things. He was killing animals and sacrificing them. To something people believe it was to God. I don't. I don't have that same belief. I think there's a lot of things that we have to look at in religious history, Bible, all the all the histories of all the religions, all the spiritualities, where you're going to really be able to look at it wisely, reasonably, and with discernment. You will see that Abel wasn't a good guy. Abel needed to die. He wasn't doing the right thing. Cain killed him because Cain was a good guy. He wasn't killing anything. He had to kill something that was causing living things to go through suffering and pain and to die for no reason. So that's a duality. You live by the sword, you die by the sword. He was Abel who died. And technically, his name in the Abel that died is is the devil. Think about that. Chew on that for a while. Alright? Something to think about. Trust me. I think you dig deeper, you'll find that Abel is the, the bad brother. He was the devil. Cain was set up. <clears throat> and there's a reason behind it, but we'll get into that in other videos. Um, anyways, die Abel. Alright? Diablo... The Diablo Mountains. Okay. So on the Diablo side of the, the of the snake's head, the Diablo Mountains, <clears throat> we have many things. We have higher crime rate all through this area. Oakland was the murder capital of the world at one point, or was the murder ca capital of the Bay Area, the murder capital of California. Lots of murders. I'm not blaming it on the people. Obviously, things are set up. We all know that. A lot of death happened here. Uh, not only that, but there is a meridian and baseline that goes right through Mount Diablo, the highest peak in the mountain ranges around the Bay Area. The highest peak is right here, and they made the meridian and baseline. But it also uh, cuts through a couple fault lines and right through the Loma Prieta, this meridian. If you go down all the way which I'll show you in just a second. So this baseline goes across here, goes across right like that, pretty much. And then the meridian comes down. <clears throat> this is where the Zodiac Killer got his name from. He used the meridian and baseline as a coordinate to start from to show where he was doing his murders and where the bodies were. So what he did is to start off to show the coordinates, he circled this cross that was made with the meridian baseline. Well, the zodiac sign is a circle around a cross. There's a cross and a circle around it. And so they named him the zodiac because of that, because of that demarcation he was doing to show coordinates from that specific spot because he was a Bay Area killer. So there's a connection with Diablo Mountains, the Diablo Mountain Range, Mount Diablo specifically, that Meridian Baseline, with a famous murderer. That some argue was never caught. 
<coughs> we don't know exactly who he was. Anyways, now for the other mountain range on the opposite side here, opposite side of this valley, this is the Santa Cruz Mountains. That's the Saint Cross or the Holy Cross. So you got a cross again. This is Die Abel. This is a cross. This is the Devil's Cross. And this is the Holy Cross. On this side, you got Oak Mountain Range, Oak Forest through here. And Oak Forest have always been related to demonic spirits and evil and hauntings and the devil and witches and blah, blah, blah. That's what you have here. You have Oak Hills. On this side, you have pine. You have the tallest pine tree in the world. And it's a redwood. And it's the coastal redwood. They're the tallest in the world. And they have a actually a really small cone, probably the size of our pineal, is right here. So these are uh, connected with the phallic, with obelisk, and the pineal. And you'll see a lot of obelisks and pine cones around the world in very specific places because they worship this. It's... Uh, it's connected to not a lot. I'm not going to go into it, uh, but there's just some information. I'm sure a few of you are interested in that, and we'll connect some things to that. I'll go into it in a different video. So, <clears throat> where I am from is San Jose, and then this is all Silicon Valley, is all this area right here. So this is the mouth of the snake. This area, San Jose's newspaper is called the San Jose Mercury News. It's a famous newspaper. It actually is the largest or second. It's probably the largest for the Bay Area. Might be the second largest, because there's some newspapers out of San Francisco that are pretty large, but I don't think they're as big anymore. But it's quite famous, the San Jose Mercury News. It's connected to the mercury that they found here in the throat of this snake. I can. This would be like the throat of it. And I want to point out there's also like an inner snake, or that's like the split tongue or something inside this, what would be considered the throat area. And uh, mercury was found and used to process the gold that they found in the Sierras, which is just northeast of the snake, is the Sierras, where all the gold was found. Everybody came into the bay, into San Francisco, to bring all the equipment and everything needed to mine all the gold and uh, everything else. And then they used the mercury to extract it from uh, quartz and other materials that it was embedded in um, and helped it uh, compile or something like that. So the largest or second largest mine, it's it's considered the second largest because they closed it down after it started toxifying the rivers and a bunch of uh, people got mercury poisoning and stuff like that. But they believe that the amount that's there, the amount of mercury there is the largest in the world. And mercury is obviously connected to the god Mercury, Hermes, Thoth, um, arguably any messenger god, and that includes Jesus, is that same energetics, is that same energy form. It can transmute things and send messages to all different levels of God that splits into multiple gods or however you want to think of it. It's the messenger or the sun or the one that can manifest into any of those realms. One of them is the human realm. And I argue that Jesus was a representation of Mercury, which is also Vishnu and other deities and other religions and spiritual systems. Um, uh, that Jesus was uh, a Mercury form coming to communicate something from God to us about how we are failing to recognize that the reason we are sinning is because we are emotionally and psychologically tricked 
by uh, an entity that's here to test us and we were failing and that's why it had to come you know mercury had to come down in the form of jesus to translate communicate that information to us and then to come into human form you have to be birthed the same way and you have to go through the same pains and you have to learn the same ways and you have to die and i believe what he was saying is that i am dying for your sins like i came here to communicate i had to come in human form to communicate about what you're being tricked about and i'm just here to give you that information and i'll come back later and check on you to see if you guys have changed anything but there's a point that we need to get into into our uh, human evolution or mission and i'll come back again but i'll be coming in a different form and you know he kind of talked about it in third person and all kinds of stuff and he called it the comforter you guys can look into that yourself figure out what you think about that anyways the point is is it is mercury energy and that's why he had to die and did, did what he did was because he had to come in the human form to communicate in the human form at that point mercury has gone down into hades hell spoke with you know the devil hades pluto whatever you want to call it different names for the same energy forms lots of different names for all the the same energy forms different cultures and stuff like that so you guys get the point um let's see so that mercury largest amount of mercury also um the geology is serpentine rock the, a lot of it uh, i would say probably um the highest percentage of of type of rock that there is especially in the south bay and in both of these hills both sides and throughout this whole like snakehead period the whole bay area is it's called serpentine rock and there's serpentine all over but there's lots and lots of serpentine rock there just another connection to the serpent the serpent's also connected to mercury it's uh connected to vishnu and and a lot in the hindu pantheon uh, the serpent is connected and you guys probably know to a lot of different religious and spiritual uh, uh, information or gods and and things like that even buddha i mean there's there's tons of serpents involved so let's see so there's a manifestation of uh this serpentine mercurial energy popping up in this area and i argue that it's connected to wisdom it's connected to information it's connected to communication so that's why the silicon valley is and was manifested here in this specific place it couldn't have taken place anywhere else or at least these controllers or ones aware of the energetics and ley lines and stuff like that geomancy they purposely made it here they knew that it was a talismanic energy that it would happen if you want to manifest something you bring a lot of the same energy into one place to make it happen because then its success rate is much higher so whatever way you want to think about it so uh i want to show that they're embedding names of characters involved with the characters that are associated with this snake jesus mercury thoth birds right birds and snakes like i pointed out um 
they embedded it here to even add more talismans through the names. The numerology, uh, the gematria, um, whatever you guys want to call it. So, San Jose is St. Joseph. It's Jesus' father. The river, the main river that runs right down the middle and out to the bay here, that's the Guadalupe River. It runs right through downtown San Jose. Guadalupe is the Virgin Mary, symbolically uh, representation of the Virgin Mary. It's the same thing. She's, she's the same thing. All right. So feature-wise, you guys may not agree, but I believe that there is a shape of a rose or a chalice with a stem coming down. Even the freeways that they put in here, they kind of made it shape like this rose or a chalice or a cup. Or if this is Guadalupe, that's her womb, that's her vagina. And that's the cha chalice, the matrix, the cup. And these can be considered her legs, these two shoots that go up on the side, the mouth, two sides of the mouth. And this is you know, her womb that she's, she's either birthing in it or this is all the womb, you know, many different layers and ways to look at it. The stem comes down here of the, of the rose or, you know, the stem of the cup, like a chalice of some sort. All right. So that's one thing to t take into consideration. Um, also, this being a snake looking feature, uh, apple is from here. And, and the symbol they used is an apple with a bite in it, right? Another representation of Eden, Garden of Eden. So the connection with Eden is, is interesting also because this area was considered the valley of the heart's delight before it was the silicon valley and i know there's some of you guys seen my previous video on that going showing that stuff right uh the valley of heart's delight so that connects to the sacred heart of jesus okay so this is symbolic in here of his heart's delight is the rays coming out of his heart and it's burning and you know our sins are not recognizing the truth and not understanding these deeper levels and stuff like that is keeping it encaged his heart from being a delight um us changing this place of fertility for fruits that are healthy for all mankind into a place that now it doesn't produce any fruit or barely any very few orchards left here it was producing 70 percent of the fruit for the whole world something like that something very large out of this one when you really look at it tiny valley little tiny thing right there producing look at that little heart that came up producing 70 percent or something very large like that of all the fruit for the world came out of here it was so fertile and we covered it up and we made it silicon valley and now it produces the majority of the technological fruit of the world especially the apple with a bite taken out of it so it traded all that fruit for just one that for one type of fruit, which is an apple with a bite taken out of it. But it was for knowledge. My argument is that it's for to spread knowledge. And that's a connection between the tree of knowledge of good and evil. We have gotten, we had all those fruits in the Garden of Eden. And it was just one fruit that we weren't supposed to eat unless we could handle it. So if we eat that one fruit, it eventually will kill us. 
it's connected to uh, this Hindu elixir nectar that will kill you that Shiva swallowed, but it can only swallow it for so long. Um, I'll go into that in another video, but the thing is, is we have to do something with this knowledge of good and evil. It's been accumulated here. Everything that ever happened in history and all that stuff is on the cloud or it's, it's embedded into the internet, right? Which came from here. So we have to take advantage of this opportunity that we, we took a bite of the knowledge of good and evil. And we got to use the good and know the evil and pass the test. And we only have so much time to do it. All right. Before it poisons us all is what the, the point is. And we will die as a mass, as one or two, a feminine and the masculine will die. And we will see this transhumanism and this transgenderism that's happening that will wipe out our ability to be fertile because we traded in fertility for this knowledge, but we have to do something with this knowledge. It's a double-edged sword. So we can't just let it pass us by and we can't be sitting here arguing weird nuances. This is about humanity using the knowledge that we partook in. We took a bite of the apple. And we're all, we're all in this. We all took a bite of the apple. If you're listening to me right now, you took a bite of the apple. All right? And uh, we destroyed the Garden of Eden. We were kicked out of it. We locked it out. We didn't. Even, we weren't even kicked out of it. We kicked it out. All right. We can reverse it all, and we can use this knowledge and we can use this technology to help mankind forever and ever and ever. All of our future fruits, which is our children. But we have to get it right, guys. You can't. You can't give up fertility for. Uh, you know, just pleasures and stuff like that. And just knowing things frivolously and not doing anything with it. We got to use the information and the bodies that we have, the physical bodies that we have to make this place what God's will is. And I argue that it is heaven on earth. His will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It's God's prayer. Sounds like someone's knocking on someone's door around here. I don't think it's mine. Um, yeah, uh, I was going to go into other aspects and go deeper into um, some of the uh, secret societies, especially the Rosicrucians put their headquarters at the very center of San Jose. I showed it in some of my other videos. Um, the Meridian runs straight down through San Jose and out pretty much like right here. The 89 earthquake, the epicenter was right here, Loma Prieta, right on the Meridian. They also have a, a Buddhist temple there. It's called the Medicinal Buddha. The medicine Buddha. He's the fifth Buddha. Very important Buddha. It's the, it's the it's the main 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 original Buddha, and it's universal. It's I mean when I say universal, like it is the god of the universe sort of thing, but also Mercury energy that manifests here on Earth and comes to Earth and helps humanity. Um, I'm arguing that it's a real thing. It exists. It's coming back argue that Jesus existed, his energy exists, the Mercury Thoth, Jesus character, is coming back. They, the Rosicrucians, the Masons, the Church of Satan, the Catholics, the Christians of all sorts, they all believe in a very specific, the Muslims, all of them, the Buddhists, all believe that a certain character of their religion, of a, of a different name in each one, 
is coming back at this time and I argue that they believe secretly that it's coming back as a blossom of St. Joseph. And I'll show you some esoteric, symbolic information that shows that. Not only is it San Jose, this is a, this is a, a, a county of Santa Clara, the St. Clairs, connected to the Templars. They all were seeking this place. The original natives that were here were Tamil, Southern uh, Indian. Um, they almost look uh, like they're from Africa because they are genetically, they're very close to African. They were the Dravidian people and they came here a long time ago looking for the same place. The Chinese were here a long time ago. The Native Americans were a shipping group that was all the Asias down into the southern India, the Tamil, and uh, they were mapping. They were mapping um, all this too. They were doing geomancy also. They were figuring out where this energy point was. And they, their culture definitely believes in this snake energy. They were looking for it. And that's why they're here. This, this whole valley used to be all Italians and Portuguese and English, Irish, all kinds of stuff. It's mostly uh, Chinese, Vietnamese, uh, just different Asians, uh, a lot of Southern Indians, a lot of Tamil people. Tamil speaking people here. They all came back. They learned technology where they're from and they all came over here. It's a, it's a big mixing pot. There's all there's every race there is in the world is here. Everybody's here. Every single person, every single culture, every single belief. They all have temples here. They all have churches, you know, wh whatever kind of building it is that they like for their specific belief system. They're all here, all the foods here, every, this is the mixing pot. That goes back to this matrix, to this grail. This is it, guys. This is the grail, the holy grail. This is the matrix. Uh, you know, in the matrix, it was all about technology, interfacing with the technology. It was all developed here. This is the technological matrix. So many things. That's what I'm trying to get across to you guys. I'm not, this isn't, shouldn't be taken lightly. You know, the Terminator, all that stuff was all about this area. You know, AI. I mean, pretty much everything you can think of. Everything you guys study. All the Egyptian stuff. All the symbology. All the numerology. All the astrology. It is all here in a big way. And I just want to bring the focus on this. I want to bring the focus on this area because it's important for many reasons. This is just a just an overview. Um, but I'll go into more detail in future videos. Uh, love you guys. Um, now you get to hear my voice. Maybe one of these days I'll show my face. We'll see. All right. Good night.